is something that's very interesting. Um, I think that for the most part it started right about the time of the automobile. There's always been an interest in indigenous people from people that are not part of that culture. Um, but in the past they could only read about it from explorers or from uh, expeditions that came through this area. When the automobile was invented and it gave people more freedom, it allowed people to visit these places such as the Grand Canyon or to Hopi or to the trading posts up the Navajo Reservation and it allowed them to see uh, how these indigenous people lived and learn a little bit more about their culture. And as the years went by and travel became uh, more efficient and was easier, you began to see more and more people that were genuinely interested in, in hearing about the indigenous way of life. Of course, you also saw uh, people that had a complete misconception about Indian people. They only knew about them from the movies or from television, and they had no real idea of, of, of what they were looking at. Over the years, tourism has become very big, uh, to the point where now we have approximately four and a half million visitors a year that come to see Grand Canyon. And those visitors come uh, both on foot to the rim of the canyon, but also by boat. Uh, approximately 22,000 uh, individuals travel down the Colorado River on rafts, uh, spending up to three weeks rafting down the Colorado River. We also have helicopters and fixed-wing airplane tours uh, that travel over the canyon. And my understanding is approximately 200,000 people a year see the Grand Canyon from a helicopter or an airplane. Well, the mandate that we have, the mission of the Park Service is to protect and preserve this area and also to provide for recreational activities. All of this draws people to the park and therefore the park benefits local communities and their economies by bringing in tourists. We're standing here at a man-made wave on the Colorado River and the, the city of Glenwood Springs installed this wave so that people could have fun and recreate on the river, which is another way we use the Colorado River. And it's important for the citizens as a recreational uh, element for the community, but also it's a tourist attraction. This is becoming very famous and a lot of people travel distance to come here and put their kayaks onto this wave. We charge $25 per vehicle that drives into Grand Canyon National Park. 80% uh, of that money stays in the park to be used for uh, development pur purposes and to support visitor services. Um, we also receive a budget from uh, the federal government to operate Grand Canyon National Park. But the economic uh, benefits that uh, are derived from a national park really are realized outside of the community. There's a town of Tuzian that is just outside of the park that has hotels and restaurants and gift shops. Uh, there's the tour industry, the air tour industry, for helicopters and fixed wings that uh, offer f tourist flights over the Grand Canyon. There are uh, guides that will take individuals on hikes into the canyon. There are guides that take uh, families on tours of the park. So there's a whole tourist industry that has evolved. established the Colorado River Management Plan uh, that is a document that really guides us, the National Park, and how the river should be managed. 
a large part of that document is how to manage all of the tourists, the 22,000 uh, tourists that travel down the length of the Colorado River in rafts. When you have 22,000 people traveling through a river that is through a wilderness area, they have a large impact on that area. 22,000 people are down there for a week to three weeks at a time. They have to go to the bathroom where they do that. They prepare all their food. How do they take care of all of the food scraps or so that they don't leave trash on the beaches? Um, where can they camp uh, so that they don't impact the the environment there and create all new camps anywhere they want to along the corridor. In the past, when river running became very popular, it was unregulated. And there were people who could, if they had a raft, they could raft down the Colorado River. And this created a problem because they were destroying some of the beaches, uh, they were destroying the vegetation, and the park saw a need to regulate that, primarily be, to preserve the ecology of the river and the river corridor. And that's when they started to develop the Colorado River Management Plans. Today, tourism is a vital part of many tribal economies. Uh, the Havasupai people, for example, it is their only economy. They're at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Uh, they live in a place by Havasu Falls, which is a huge tourist draw. So most of their economy at the bottom of the canyon is driven by tourism. Others, such as the Hopi tribe, the Navajo Nation, uh, Wallapai, uh, de depend on tourism to provide a, a significant uh, boost to their economies.